Okay, Lauren, we have a huge guest today who I'm so excited. She's one of my friends. She's one of the girlies. But please, can we welcome the actress, producer, extraordinaire, star mm -hmm. of Neighbours. It is Ms. Charlotte Chimes, everybody. Hello. Hey, girls. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, you beautiful angel. Thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah, Big thanks Natural for Talents. having me. I feel like this is a really huge sort of coming together of absolutely planets. this episode is emphasis on the talent um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for once, okay because we have a lot of comedians on here and we all know that we're just kind of making our way <laughs> through life talented. Um, but no 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 no, <laughs> no we that's do you. What you do that's you girly um so you're in melbourne at the moment literally how are you how is your life yeah. Um, well, as you know, I, I've come down, I've been struck down with the Rona, La Rona. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. isolating. This is crazy. crazy. The gossip. This is crazy. Shit. I can't believe it. it yeah. Honestly, it was like, because we get tested every week at work. Monday yeah. tested, Tuesday negative, Wednesday woke up kind of like flat, went <gasps> for a 10K run. Uh -oh. cancelled dinner plans Wednesday yeah. night because I was like, I'm flying to Sydney tomorrow to meet some babies. A couple of my friends have had babies. Better not be sick. Woke up Thursday and was like, fuck, I've yeah. got a cold. And then my darling <gasps> friend Strath came over to my house with one of those rapid tests. And I was like, I'm not doing yeah. it. I don't have COVID. I was negative two days ago. And we're both <gasps> well, standing in my well, kitchen well. with masks on, literally. And I did the rapid test and it was like, you know, pregnancy test it's the lines it's basically the I was same. literally about to say can, <laughs> can you just buy your own like a pregnancy test you can go to the pharmacist and be like hey I want a quick COVID test is I that, need a quick COVID test yeah they've test. only um literally just started te te selling them yeah fuck yeah. oh and, my um, god um, another and thing to stress um, about the two lines became very clear that it was two lines and I literally <gasps> in that moment was like and I'd rather be pregnant I'd rather be pregnant yes <laughs> Please, no, I can't do this. <gasps> Absolutely. So... I would look at a COVID test and be like, I'm pregnant. And they're like, no, could you, you have COVID. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, I was oh, like, oh, can I? <laughs> I know. It's so controversial. I was like, book me in for an abortion so I can go out dancing. Like, don't make me <laughs> isolate for 10 days. <laughs> yeah, why oh can't they just God. abort the COVID? I don't Literally, know. Literally, can't they? Wait, wait. <sighs> okay, wait. I have a million questions. Yeah. I'm okay. sure we all do. But number one, so you, so clear, I was going to ask you, did you think you have it? Like, I feel like people no. are either, when they're sick, they're like, I've got it. And other people are like, I don't have it. And then, you know, and then the results are either way. So I'm you like, were, I you live were like, in no way I have it. I don't have it. Yeah. If I was good to get it, That's I'd so have funny. had it. Yeah. I literally true, was true, in true, disbelief. True, 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 so then true. I did two more rapid tests and all three of them were positive. And that's when it was like, okay, <gasps> fuck. Wow. Fuck. And so then fuck. at that point, do you have to like call New South, like, I mean, Victoria Health and stuff or go get. No, you've just got to go get a proper PCR and... swab test. And I rang work on my way yeah. to be like, hey, I won't be in tomorrow or next week, I think. <gasps> um. And they were all so, Wait. everyone was so calm about it. Everyone was like, you don't have it. Oh. It's fine. You get that test. But I rang Janine, who's my psychologist and a kinesiologist and like a witch. And she was like, you've got it. Yeah. I guarantee you. You've oh, got my it. God. Can I just, um, can I just pause and say that when you said you rang Janine, I, my mind immediately jumped to that you rang <laughs> um, the founder of Boost Juice, Janine. And I was like, yeah, she's probably your mentor or something. Yeah. She is. I ring Janine and she was like, babe, you need a mango magic. You need an immunity booster you in there. You need a mango and magic. And it'll be cleared up. Large. A large mango magic. Large. Wait, okay. Wait. So, Char, so you, for everyone who doesn't know, you're a star of the TV soap Neighbours. And what I want to know is like, how do they handle it? Do they feel like write you out of the script? Do they just push back your filming? Like, what is the yeah. go there? Yeah, so it be fine. Sorry. Don't do that. Don't be like, oh, it's probably my fault. It's not your fault. It's the internet's fault. <laughs> no, no, you know, it's actually my not. fault. Like, I um, <laughs> I did the internet. I made it, so. Fuck, Lauren. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, you look so clear right now. Are yeah, you, you getting it that, Lauren? Great. It's great. We're back on. I think it's okay. good. Let's... I think we're 100. Should I answer the question again? 
Yes. 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 So we shoot five episodes a week. I'm contracted to three. Sometimes I do a fourth depending on storyline if it's big. But after all the baby saga of the stealing of the baby and running away with the baby, blah, 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 I'm, my storyline's not huge at the moment. So yeah. they've written me out of the equivalent of an episode. So next week I'll have to shoot the equivalent of five episodes worth personally. That's wow. too much. So it'll just be a very, very busy week. Yeah. And that I is. already am like, I have no energy. Yeah, I so... shot like um one episode of television like in my whole life, and it's I'm still pretty tired. <laughs> He's reeling um, from it. <laughs> I'm reeling. I like I, my heart is beating. Like I haven't <laughs> thrown yeah. my sleep schedule out the window just shooting yeah. the panel show question everything several months ago. Babe, yeah. you need Janine. You need a mango magic. <laughs> you need a mango magic <laughs> and um, a boost, a, a shot. You yeah, need a like, beauty booster. I need. Mean. What else are the shots? I need a wheatgrass shot in there as well. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, though, wait, you just <laughs> slightly mentioned it, the stealing the baby and stuff, because when I was Googling you before we talked to you, um, because I'm really sorry to admit this, but I actually don't watch Neighbours. Um, I'm not up to That's date fine. on the longest-running soap opera ever in the world. It's not really a soap <laughs> opera, though, is it? But what's your storyline? Because when I, yeah, when I looked you up, there, it was like, you pop up immediately because apparently your storyline was like especially juicy. So we love like yeah. gossip on this podcast. Would you tell us like what happened to your character? But like tell us like it's like a <laughs> gossip story that it's real. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like there was this girl and her name was Nicolette and she moved to town and yeah. she's a lesbian and she's oh a God. bit of like she's a bit naughty, you know, the kind yeah. of naughty that steals money from dead patients because she was a nurse. She's a naughty oh, nurse. But hey, guys, <laughs> guys, it was only $100,000. Like it's not a what? big deal. Oh, yeah, it was going to get money anyway. Like what? The fucking it's, tip. Like cares? his kids, the dead guy's kids. Whatever, who, like. No, can I tell you, never visited him. Oh, ever. yeah. Assholes. And, and then Assholes. what? So like what? Okay, you're against her so the then, money, so you're pro just like generational wealth. Then I guess people thank are you. against Basically, taxation and stuff. You know. They obviously don't eat avocado on toast for breakfast. Yeah. Um, Nicolette does. And then she moved in with a gay couple and they were going through this whole surrogacy rigmarole and she was like, you know, what's a great idea? Let's have a baby together. <gasps> yeah. Modern and they family. were like, sure, let's do it. It's such a modern family. It's your Pia Vergara there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just fucking ruined the ending. Of course she's there. <laughs> and then she comes up. She is the godmother of the baby, Conchetta. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm the worst. And wasn't that, like, an on again, off again with your, like, other beautiful yeah, so, poster? So there's one of the gay, the Aaron and David. So Aaron's sister, Chloe, and Nicolette were dating. <gasps> yes. Horny. So basically I was dating the father's, the auntie of the baby. Wow. Wow. And then she had an affair <gasps> with the other father's twin brother. Whoa. Well, oh well, wait, I'm quickly going to say here, incest is more common than you think. Than you think. That's um, a phrase we say that it a we've lot learned on from this doing podcast. our podcast, Char, because okay. this plot line that you're talking about, there are real people in the world who live this exact life. You know? Yeah, they literally like, do. Yeah, and they're um, emailing us about it. So... <laughs> Yeah. Right this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so Nicolette finds out about, you know, the affair and is devastated. So she runs away and gives birth without the fathers. <gasps> she robs them of being present at the birth of their baby girl. Mm -hmm. Wow, girl boss. Girl boss. I know. She's like, well, your sister was <laughs> rude to me, so I'm going to steal your baby. That's some And true. literally, like, you didn't tell me the truth, so I'm going to steal oh, your baby. Really? Totally. You know, wow. They say not all men. I say all men. So all of all them. Men. Get them. Get them out. Get rid of them. Get them out. Even if they're gay. Yeah. yeah. You're still Sorry. a man. Okay. You still have a penis. <laughs> You're not you don't one of the free pass. Okay. And if you have a baby, <laughs> we'll take it from you. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Wait, Chad, did you like? Did you like? Wait. Is it like a home birth or like you had professionals? There? I didn't even get to do the birth. <gasps> I was like, I wanted to quit. It we was off screen. Birth scene. We want a home birth. Literally. She's a nurse. I want to see her deliver I her own baby. I in the bath all the time. Shit. 
I do that too, to be but robbed for no reason. So. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like maybe someday I'll get to give birth on TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a redhead, so I guess I could kind of play like if you went away and had the baby, and then like, like I don't know, maybe like oh my you, god, you can come and play. Yeah, but like a really like you get addicted to ice or something and you get all fucked up. Then I come back as like a decrepit looking version of you, take my makeup off, you know, grow my hair <laughs> out. I'm like, hello. And they're like, what happened to you? That's who I could play ice. neighbors. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea. Um, do you care if I write that down and pitch it? Yeah, come yeah, email that. to the producers. Please, 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 please. Please. Yeah. Please, I was going to say that. Sorry, um... you can hear my door buzzer. I think it's probably like <laughs> something I've bought frantically from the iconic in the past mm. five days but it'll stop soon. oh god i bought um, something online this morning and i'm like why did i do that i'm going mental i'm buying a lot right now i've just been on a tear i don't know anyway girlies i can't i can't encourage it i've been <laughs> listening to she's on the money for weeks now and she and that podcast has made me like scared to buy things Maybe. if i don't have like 20 grand in savings soon i'm like gonna kill myself that's, a that's lot. what listening to this podcast has done to me that do you want to be cremated yeah. or buried wow she came <laughs> with the question <laughs> i yeah. yeah you know what i think that is so interesting because i actually think that people who get buried are actually really selfish and we are losing Same. space i'm sorry I, you're taking up yeah. precious fucking space what about that i like and i know we've got the old ancient ones like Rookwood and that one that's like near Coogee or whatever the fuck. But honestly, I'm like, that's prime real estate. Prime <laughs> real estate. For dead people. Yeah. For like one weird guy to like jerk off in a, a a fucking... No one's going there other than like girlies with their b- b- boost juice. And like, <laughs> I just think it's a magic. waste of space. So I would say cremated. I feel like I agree with you wholeheartedly, except all of the people who are buried, you can stay. No more burials from now on. I no, like, no, I, I think they should be exhumed and they should just be thrown in the ocean so that we can yeah. build apartments. Um, <gasps> sorry, Conchetta, I know we actually even saw your grandmother's mausoleum, but that's the size mm. of a studio apartment. Absolutely. And it's just kind of, she's not that really big. using the space. Absolutely, it is huge. I mean, I should be able to live there. Yeah, they can stay. But why didn't you move in there. with her? Did you have a good relationship? Um, sort of yes and no. It's a bit complex. <laughs> you should it's move in. Yeah, I should move in to my mum's ma- mausoleum with all my <laughs> old dead family relatives yeah. in their little like it's like a filing cabinet for dead people. There's yeah. like three. On bunk each beds. side, three at the big bunk bed. Is it on a spot? You can put a little futon in. I mean, maybe everyone else has to not be buried from now, except for the big natural talent girlies. We get the final mausoleum. Yeah. It's pink, and the top three guests get to be buried with us. Yeah, so obviously so it's like, me. It, yeah. It's like Cha and like Ben Lee. Love it. <laughs> and and, all, and a listener who we talked to, the girl who um oh what was her, oh I think we didn't say her name, but we had a listener who yeah. sent us a great story about when she was dating someone and then she came on as a guest and told us about a ghost that she saw when she was a oh child. my god i love so her yeah totally oh my god there's so much to talk about i'm literally dying we've a million yeah questions like I, we, we haven't even got into like do you believe in ghosts but like we have to also talk <laughs> wow. about your like long TV <laughs> career <laughs> where do we go next lauren what do you what should um, we do i don't know years? i mean covid like we we like you have covid like i mean there's not that much more to say do you know who gave it to you you can like track them no down. no mm. idea do you think it's like from work like does it complicate things no one at work else has it but okay me. wow yeah. the the executive producer was like i want you to think that you're like my lucky number one and i was like touching sentiment i probably won't thank you <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, this is what I want to know because I saw COVID depicted on a TV show and it looked awful. Can you tell us and the listeners, like, literally, what is it like to have it? What are your days like? What are the get, um, get into it? Yeah, no one be afraid of it. That's what I was like. It was like, especially if you're double vaxxed, you it's a cold and I'm just really fatigued. Yeah, yeah. And I don't cope well doing nothing because I'm a very busy, active person, yeah. a social yeah. butterfly. Yeah. And I'm like stuck inside. Totally. You don't yeah. keep so, a butterfly inside. Well, that's they die. Yeah, because you're you're double vaxxed as well, obviously. Then it's like, yes, because I don't know. Like I'm obviously vaccinated as well, and then like it's been 
in Sydney, then when it got a bit scary or something for a minute, there's been a few more cases and then I'm like going to gigs and stuff. There's so many people around. It's kind of crossed my mind of like, oh, like I could get it, but then it's kind of like, totally. yeah, I might get it. And like, what am I going to do? Like just not live my life forever. Well, mm-hmm. honestly, a friend of mine, a friend of my, a friend of a friend who's a doctor here in Melbourne was like, honestly, the best case scenario is to be double vaxxed and then to get COVID because then yeah. you have the antibodies uh... and you're like, I couldn't be safer now moving forward. Yeah. Um, but I agree with the sentiment. Like you have to live your life. We have been cooped up way too long. Yeah. I mean, it could have been one of the like four people I kissed out on the Friday night <gasps> previous. Awesome. Get it. Awesome. Um, Worth it. Um, <laughs> some cute girls yeah. and some cute guys. But Shake it actually up. one of them I was told was not cute and I don't even remember <laughs> kissing them. So <laughs> we can just forget that happened. What does it matter? It's so Maybe funny to be they like... gave me COVID. <laughs> you're like, why do I have COVID? I don't have COVID. And you're like, and then like two I days earlier. Oh, <laughs> you're like, spit yeah. in my mouth. For everyone listening, my Charlotte <laughs> put sunglasses on like Ferris Bueller and I had mm. to take a photo. She looks incredible. Um, <laughs> these are these are a parcel. These were I'm just moving to oh sorry, I'm just gonna open my window because it's muggy here too. So muggy. La, it's crazy. La, La Nina. Yes, it's, it's going here. On. Um, um so yeah, COVID, so, honestly, girls, if you get it, it just means you have to like rest. That's yeah. it. It's a week of oh, rest, no. ten days of rest. I, yeah. Hate I'm that. begging. <laughs> I'm begging for a reason to stay home and not do anything and to rest and for my boyfriend to wait on me hand and foot. You know, he won't be able to see you unless you want him to catch it. But oh, yes, yeah. I like that too. That's well, where so would he funny. go? Yeah, that's and why isn't he waiting on you hand and foot now and, anyway? Yeah, because Precisely. The man, the man is at he's on the tennis courts twenty four seven. What do I tell you? I can't I can't get him back. Oh my he's, god. Oh he's, no. He's the ten- but wait. This is actually so interesting because he's sitting right next to me, but just like Ben, would Ben, if you were to choose between living with your family and not getting COVID or <coughs> being in the apartment if I had COVID and living with me and getting it and isolating with me, what would you choose? Isolate with you. Boom. That's how you know they love well, you. Also, like, he's, the, he's the one. He's, he's the you. one. He's, if you he's got the one, it, he'd probably have I to. the man and wife. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you Finally. got it and you lived together, like he couldn't just like go to his mom's house because he would have been in contact with you so much. Like he'd have to go isolate like yeah. somewhere else anyway. Oh, that's right? so true. So, like, so what he has, you do? if one of us falls, the other one you're falls. getting it, and yeah. that's yeah. called the codependence. It's called codependence, and it rocks. Okay, mm-hmm. now oh. back to you, Char. <laughs> I mean, you've given us the lo- the lowdown on um COVID. I just have to get this question out of because mm. you are on TV and Neighbors is such a huge show, and you're such a bright star. I know that you have so many fans. What I want to know is, do you have any crazy fan stories? Freaky, yes. any fan freaky, mail messages? Crazy. Oh yeah, present. we get fan mail. We get fan mail. I got sent a foot scrub. That's kind of cool. All right. that's that's something I would in a bad way. <laughs> was it like from a man? I don't know. It was from a man, and it was a uh, foot scrub, and it was like suspicious. It's, hmm. it's foot fetish vibes. It had the best present it. I've ever been given is actually by a fan, Colm. Colm Bren, he's in Ireland. Hi, Colm, if you're listening. Wow. Um, he sent me a uh, – it's it's a Gaelic um, symbol and it's – I can't remember what the saying is, but it's basically a thousand welcomes. And he says, whenever I go to visit Ireland, just know that I will have a thousand welcomes oh, when I go there. That's which so I nice. just thought was so lovely. Yeah. But, you know, I get unsolicited dick pics a lot. No, too. no, you don't. Wow. You don't. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. <gasps> With no message, just the oh, dick? Sometimes just the dick. There are other guys that message. There's one guy, Mr. Muscles, who messages me every single day, Charlotte, my gorgeous, sexy, beautiful, lovely. And it's just like, you are gross. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Muscles, I'm never going to reply to you. That Mr. Muscles. So he sounds hot. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like my type. Um, yeah. That's insane. You're just getting unsolicited dick pics. Oh my God. I didn't I think they were real. And like, it is I... my dream one day to figure out who sent the dick pic and like send it to their wife to be like, this yeah. is what yeah. your husband's up to. You've got to totally. do some detective work on this. Well, actually, I mean, if you send us the – um. The dicks. We'll do like a dick lineup with all of our listeners, and people will be like, "Can you identify this dick?" And people will be like, "Yeah, that's unmistakable. That's my ex boyfriend's dick. 
Um, and then Larry, <laughs> fucking Larry. That's definitely him. I don't know if I could you even identify dicks out of a lineup if you saw them all. Oh, that you'd ever no. you could seen. you could nah. give me my boyfriend's dick next to five different random dicks, and I would not be able to tell you. That's the little amount I look at it and want to see it. I've got no clue. <laughs> I wouldn't even know the difference between circumcised, uncircumcised. Who cares? I don't know. Sometimes I, like, sometimes. Is that, were you being serious? Because sometimes I'm like, wait, yeah. are you circumcised or not? I don't know. You it know can, what's so funny? Because yeah, I don't like, just go like, let me unwrap you like a little present. <laughs> and, oh, ooh, yeah. I'm going to, let me inspect this. Oh, this good shaft. Yes, I would like to say that that is circumcised. <laughs> good girth. That should be. Good breath. A, a good, new. Good held. Um, yeah, that should be like a new game show that you host. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Are the team captains? Cut yes, or are. uncut, but or it's like a YouTube <laughs> news. You do it like a beauty blogger. You like hold up the dick to the camera with your hand behind it. You're like, this is the um, this is the penis <laughs> for the focus. They're so like, yep, yeah, this one. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. No. Um, this is a circumcised penis. I can tell. See, because of this. Yeah. Can I just say something that I grew up. Um, well, I don't know. Seinfeld was very important to me and I watched it a million trillion times. And in that show, it seemed like the normal or very common was an un no circumcised penis. Right. And then being yes. in Australia and look, I haven't seen many. Um, I, I haven't got that many on my, what's the word? Notches Under on belt. my belt. Yeah. But of all the, I was not seeing circumcised anywhere. And I was like, what is this concept? Like, what but is so this? It's a cultural thing. It's Americans. I yeah. mean, I think yeah. more and more recently, like uncircumcised is more common, but like culturally in America, it was the norm to, to be circumcised. Wow. Like my sister's about to have a baby boy and I hadn't even thought about this. I'm going to have yes. to get off this call and ring her straight away to be like, yes. what are we doing with his teeth? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Can I just say something else which is really interesting? So everyone knows Ben, my boyfriend, is Jewish. He is a cut man. We love to hear it. Very proud, exciting. And um, if I marry this man, like I'm not Jewish, like what's going to happen? Like it's a merging of two different oh, so religious you have cultures. To become Jewish or? No, I don't have to. I don't think okay, so. Okay, great. But what's interesting is my younger sister, my very beautiful, opinionated younger sister, was like, if you two have a son, you better fucking not touch his dick. She was like, it is abuse to children. Ever. She not even to clean it. Like, <laughs> Never. <laughs> Don't touch it. As really like bad and horrible and not useful and that it should be phased out. And then I'm with my boyfriend, Ben, who I kind of get the vibe that he would want the son to be circumcised, as is the tradition, his grandfather. Like that's already I've got a predicament and we're not even married. Do you see what's going on here? It's I really do. Stressful. I see this. It is stressful. It should. I'm going to lie awake tonight and I'm yeah, going to have cold that. sweats uh-huh. and I'm going to like, fuck, if Conchetta and Ben get married and if she has a son to him, <laughs> yeah. what are we going to do with his What dick? are we going to do? And yeah. honestly, what you know how do? I would decide it? An Instagram poll on the Big Natural Channel. I think I was just about to say that's the only way. It's the only way. It's the only way. It's the only way. God, what else is that? I mean, listeners, hey, write in. Let us know what you think. My vote, I don't know, it's complicated. If, if you're like not jewish or like there's no medical reason to do it i really don't see why you would like it's wholly yeah. unnecessary and can can go horribly wrong and like can cause issues but if it's a religious thing and a cultural thing then i can kind of understand like hmm. the desire so i don't know i can't wait i mean like i personally wouldn't because i'm not there's no reason for me yeah I'm not jewish of course other than me being like lauren my son's getting circumcised because we're best friends have yeah. you thought about maybe your son could have that too and they can yeah be like, and really then they because they'd be friends. best friends and they'd like see each other's dicks and stuff and i wouldn't want either one of them to like feel weird so they should feel <laughs> yeah that would be bad mm. when we get pregnant so at the exact same time on the same date um yeah and we with have the same set with the same gender <laughs> Yeah, with the same, same gender, gender the same sex. As we, in, like, boot, we do ben the same. Ben is going to have sex with you both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is out of the question. No, no. you're like, absolutely fucking, Lauren, don't even look at him. We're going to get yeah, a third party now. donor. We're going to get a third party sperm donor who is like <laughs> optimum in all ways <laughs> and has no history of mental illness. Um, and we're just going to get him to impregnate both of us. And we'll just tell our what? respective boyfriends but that. Is he Jewish or not? Mm. Jewish I don't or not know. Jewish, though. I don't know. It's complicated. Maybe he has to be like a combination of Italian, Jewish, and red haired and blue eyed, mm. like my boyfriend. Like it has to just be a combination of all of us. So, like, 
the ugliest man in the world. Yeah, it would be <laughs> horrific looking man. It would be a Jewish guy with red hair, weirdly blue oh. eyes, but like oh. olive Italian skin, and he's really hairy. Oh, oh my gosh. wow. And Mama someone Mia. would be listening, being like, that's my type. Yeah, yeah. and his penis that's is like type. half circumcised. <laughs> Just on like the right side, just like not like half down, half down. So all ladies, the way around. holding this up here, one I just want to let yeah. you know that this one is yeah. what we like to call half circumcised. Half circumcised. <laughs> oh my god, we've gone off topic. Uh, we to. We should go back to you, Jean. So on this podcast, yeah. we talk about gossip, and you've had a little mm-hmm. bit of a think. Have you got a story or something in your life that you're like, this is the juicy? Well, gossip. speaking of penises, this is coming to me. An ex boyfriend of mine had testicular torsion. Whoa. And before we started dating and he nearly died because of it. I had to like perform surgery to untwist his dick. And every now and again, I would often think like, mm, that's because you've had testicular torsion. Like that makes sense. You're this way because of that like, thing. Emotionally that, or was his dick like fucked up looking? Like, his dick was a little fucked up. Wait, you need to explain <laughs> what this big word is. What is testicular torsion? So it's like when your testes twist or something on the inside. Oh. Yeah. Ow. And then you how have a surgery it... to untwist them. Yeah, how did they it get twisted? It just happens like in your sleep or something. <gasps> Or so he said. Who knows? No, he was doing something. He was up to something. <laughs> he was probably up to something. Yeah. Asshole. Oh, I was just asleep um, and my balls got all twisted up. I don't know how it happened. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I imagine doing the surgery. It's like, you know when you like on like a tire swing and you like just go around and around and around and then you let go yeah. and you like spin around rapidly? That's like what they do in the surgery. They cut open the scrotum. They just like hold them up by the strings and they just like go like. <gasps> yes. <laughs> like an unspin that's what i'm imagining wow so funny yeah i think so that's just the first thing that popped into my head i don't know that's big gossip like that is like i had an ex-boyfriend who had a dick that like curved to the left (laughs) yeah and that's a novelty (laughs) that happens i am to the left to the left was it good like Like, did you have to like like from the left like imagine like sort of like a boomerang dick and wow. um, let's just say wow. that he, I lost my virginity to him and he's the sweetest, loveliest man. But I think because of it, it touched a certain spot that meant that a certain type of orgasm was had. <laughs> so I think you could say, I'm saying this like, like how a PR person would speak because I'm like, I don't <laughs> even know who listens to this anymore. Like fucking hell. But you can't yeah, know. That, that, we can't know. And I don't really want to know, but that's as nicely as I can put it okay um wow wow and that's that's some good gossip that is good gossip i once um hooked up with a guy and he was like before we did anything he was like oh i should let you know a while ago like he had to be circumcised as an adult that happens sometimes (gasps) because he had like the thing where like your foreskin is like too tight or something and it's like painful and he yeah yeah, and then he got circumcised like i don't remember he was like i don't know like 20 something and then he was like, it was like its debut, his new penis's debut. Oh my god, you were, like, you took his new penis yeah. virginity. Like, this is a lot That's of pressure. That's amazing. I feel like this is an episode of Stewieville or I, something. I, uh, Maybe it does. It's the I debut. I know someone that that happened to as well. No, I do know obviously. someone. Yep, as an adult, had to be circumcised again. <gasps> oh my god, not again. Had to be circumcised again. <laughs> they just t- took the whole top off. <laughs> just the knob gone babe don't worry which makes me want to ask you 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 know you said you kissed four people how was mm. how was that that's like yeah. the funnest night ever what was Coming going on what was happening well I'm just like living my single best life yeah at the moment because I was in a six-year relationship in my from 21 to yeah. 27. Wow, yeah. And then I dated a guy who was just a rebound. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming. You served your purpose. Yeah. And so now I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, he's not all bad, just partially bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now I'm like, oh, my God, being single. My sister really helped me. She was like, you know, I'd be living this up because next thing you know, you're going to meet someone and that's mm. the person. Mm-hmm. And you'll never be able to go out and kiss four people in one night ever again. Mm-hmm. And okay. so that was, I was like, oh my God, now we're out of lockdown. Dance yeah. floors are open. 
they weren't that weekend. I did get kicked out of a place for dancing. Um, <gasps> oh, against the rules? Yeah, but it's like, come on, guys, you know me. I come here every week. <laughs> come on, guys, I'm an amazing dancer. You must not let me go. <laughs> Please let me dance for you. <laughs> Wait, Chad, do you, like, get recognised so much in your life? Um, I used to get recognised more with the bright red hair now that my hair's not as bright. <gasps> I like there was there was this one Indian family once that handed me their baby for a family photo on Sick. the street. <laughs> you should have you should have stolen it and been like, oh, just like the character, guys. Sorry, just give it back. <laughs> Thank you. please take no. it back. I'm living please my single best back. life. I don't Actually, want this baby. The worst one was in a fitting room. My friend Christy was staying. You know Christy Hawkins? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Christy was staying with me. We went out. We had a massive night. I was wow. like so hungover the next day. We were oh trying on God. a top in this shop and this one woman, and she was like, you know, in her 40s, very attractive, shopping with her young daughter. And she was like, oh, my God, you're so much prettier in real life. Oh, Brutal. come on. And I was like, I look like I'm dying. <laughs> Yeah, what the fuck do and I look, look like on Neighbours in then? real life? How I mean, are they doing a makeup on that show? <laughs> they weren't doing my hair very well at the time and they uh, fucked my hair so badly. I had to get it cut short because my hair broke off. Damn. Oh, okay. This is actually interesting, Gus. That I, was I, traumatic. I wanted to get into the gossip of like working in TV. What is mm. it like having your – having all because there's all that out of your control, the, the yes. hair, the clothes, the makeup. You know? Well, yes, to a degree. I mean, if you absolutely hate something, you just speak to the head of the department and you're yeah. like, hey, I hate this. But it was a head of department doing my hair. So I felt like I was in a bit of a conundrum to be like, I hate how you do my hair. Can I please have someone else? And then my hair was fucking ruined. So what were they doing? Um, over bleaching it or something? Oh, or? No, over curling it every day. Oh, no. Over curling it. I've heard and about that, yes. It was so traumatic. Like my this side, my right hand side literally snapped off <gasps> and I had like a chunk missing no. here. That's they so don't, So we then we then did like hair extension and actually yep. what's funny is this is how Tim, one of my best friends here in Melbourne and I really connected is I was sending Christy an Instagram story, what I thought was priv, privé, private. Yeah, got it. Just yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. I'd just woken up. You can see the hair extensions everywhere in my hair. I've got makeup under my eyes. I'm giving her a view. There's road works <laughs> happening outside. <laughs> And I posted it to my story. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I know. Damn. It's worse than posting being naked to your story. I would really yeah. rather have posted me naked than people seeing that I had hair extenders because I had such shame around the fact that, like, my hair had been fucked. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, I came back that next week to work and I was like, take them out, cut my hair short. I don't care. We have to, like, and now I actually yeah. like my hair short. Yeah, it But looks it took so me a while good. to get there. But Tim was the only person, like, other than my mum who I knew who'd seen the story. All the rest were just random. So it was like, oh, who cares about you? Yeah. Um, but he and I, he loves to bring it up and we laugh about it. And I'm like, oh, I could cry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but just the fact you saying Tim has made me think of Tim Robards, the ex-bachelor who you, Timmy. I know, worked with on that show. Yep. Can what's he? What was he like? What's he like? He was what, great. He's a really lovely guy. He um, he he's not going to listen to this, is he? No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. not. He's lovely. He's so lovely, and he really <laughs> but... wanted to be very good. But yeah, there would be days yeah. where I'd be like, "I'm great. Thank you for asking. My weekend was nice. I did this." <laughs> Like that's how you have a conversation, With Tim. Him. You yeah, know, yeah, you yeah. also ask the other person about themselves. Totally. Wow. Oh my god, um, that's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Yeah. yeah. People who don't know to do that. It's well, it's a conversation. It's not a lecture. Like you yeah. have this common decency. Totally. Like, always wondered like that's like you know the shows like the Bachelor and stuff, and people are like I just want to find love or something, and it's like this guy seems so great, and I'm like. No, kind of like inherently, if you are going to be The Bachelor, like there is some kind of severe character flaw in you, you know, like there's got to be something going mm. on. If he's just like a nice man and scientist, I, I don't know if this is him, but like what one of them was a scientist. And then it's like, oh, now I want to be on reality television. Like, no, there's like something gone wrong there. Like you're not going to be like. <laughs> yeah, I fucking no offense, hate but... reality TV. I fucking hate it. I don't it's... watch it. I don't yeah. want to know about it. I I think it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's like. 
And I've got friends yeah. who love it and watch it. Yeah, and like, yeah. I'm not judging you. I'm judging that Australia. Yes. Australia's content yes. went from producing some of the best dramas. Yeah. Like Love My Way, The Secret Life of Us, you know, to now yes. primetime TV showcasing Survivor, The Bachelor, The it's Bachelorette, only Love Island. Yeah. Absolutely. It is gone. Yeah, it's, like, it's for dumb people. In it's, my head, it is just that's what TV is, that they're the only people watching normal TV. The rest of us are, like, on Netflix. We're binge. on Netflix, binge, Amazon Prime, Stan. Yeah, like, and it's a shame, like, because as obviously as you being someone who's working in the Australian film industry, like, that there is just like no local scripted content being produced or if there is it's like one drop in the ocean of unscripted Literally. cheap to produce like you know inherently that's that the just, reason they make it, it it's yeah. so cheap it's cheap yeah. and do people they realize that like nothing guys this is cheap you don't get paid shit there's no one working as writers there's no one working as talent there's no fostering of like the creative voices that like are coming up like yeah like you said like love love your way and stuff like all of these writers and, and creatives that worked on that show, like, just that isn't happening for the next generation because And it's like for maps. me on dating apps, if you see someone who was on, I'm like, how do I, I'm like want to report user. <laughs> <laughs> Kick this fucker off this app. You yeah. went on The Bachelor and didn't find love. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. I don't want your sloppy seconds. Bye. <laughs> Which is, which to me is even more interesting that Tim and isn't like when he was the bachelor, the girl he was with, they're still together. They're, yeah. They're like married and have a baby and they're very yes. happy. That's um, great. She, he's Tim like Robards. a chunky. Fit. He's gorgeous. Yeah. He's like gorgeous. Oh, he's like, him. Is he a doctor? He was a chiropractor. So chiropractor. Kind of snake oil salesman. Um, But <laughs> isn't Georgia Love still with that guy as well? Yeah, yep, she is. God, yep. they're unbearable on Instagram. I don't know. This is probably controversial. I'm sorry. Unbearable. Hey, girlies, I'm sorry <laughs> if you like these people, but um, I don't Love know. Them. Like their relationship on Instagram, I'm just like, kill me, grow up. It's a little bit <laughs> like, is it realistic or are they just doing it for show? I don't yeah. know. It's like so, it's very cringe. I don't know. Like just a grown, was it them? Do they have a baby or am I thinking of someone else? Or are you oh, thinking, of thinking of the guy? Matt. Matt. Fuck, I think I am. Maddie J and, and Lady, Lady the Cat. Lady and the cat. Lady Maddie, and the cat? I don't Maddie, know. This guy. Maddie J and the guy. Yeah, because then his wife and him uh, on Instagram and she's like, oh, like Maddie J's babysitting today. And he's like, oh, I don't know what a nappy is. Like, and I'm like, cool, you're a father. Why don't you care for your own <laughs> child? You know? I know. It's- I don't find any anyone who like claps a male for like unpacking the dishwasher or doing any. Like, yeah. it's like, um, <laughs> so cool yeah you so, live there man unpack the fucking dishwasher literally. i'm not gonna do it <laughs> no <laughs> fucking hell so so funny so yeah anyway. it's, a, it's a very different it's, it's something's happening where it's just all reality and i have to actually open up and confess that i was just watching um wow. selling sunset which oh, is that's, I don't that, know. Netflix, is that no, different? But, I don't know if it's different, but what I would say is it's this crazy show where it's played as like reality and real, but at the same time, it seems honestly like a Shakespearean drama that they've got like I don't know wow. how to explain it. Like they've got the they've got the enemy, they've got the thing, they mm. always do the same kind of talking, but it's it plays like it's reality. And Very I guess produced. that is something to me that I'm like, it would be interesting to know what is going on behind the scenes here uh, how many of these people are actresses how many of this is totally because anyway? that's the other thing a lot of the people who go on those shows are actors hoping to get a big up a bigger profile and yeah. that, that'll help them it's like no it's far it's fucking hard work and like never giving up that's what happens <laughs> yeah oh my so, god really. <laughs> wait i'm got... is not going to make you a star but unfortunately it's gonna make me look down on you yeah Mm. but it does like it does i don't know we've talked about it before it's like in this world being an australian like female comedian especially it's like oh well if you ever want to be like paired with a male comedian on the radio it's like well you better go on the bachelor because that's what you have to do and it's so funny actually we're like dragging all this stuff and i don't even know if we're gonna talk about this we can we can (laughs) we can just we just started our application could just send it to me and she was like um should we just do this we're applying for the Amazing race. Amazing race. Oh my god, see, the amazing race is different. I'm sorry, the amazing race is different. It is different. different. Is it different? Yeah. It's I different. guess it's different. Guess it's it not is. just like, hey, I put on this pretty dress, love me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's that. less 
to me, I mean, it's the one where it's the one reality <laughs> show where I get to travel the fucking world. Yeah. Like, that's not not everyone. Every show is like that. Like, what's that? Oh one my that god, I would so watch it if you guys were on it. It would right? be so fun. Can you imagine the so riffs? Is anyone listening so to this? Wow. And oh. I'm so sheltered, um, and and Lauren is less so, and Lauren has these skills, and I have these skills. But at the same time, I I dish all this, but at the same time, it just feels in this industry unless you you like you do reality if you have to do it that's a, you'll just get a following yeah I just feel like, like that's, it's a slow burn i, I also want to like retract some of my statement i don't hate all reality tv there's some yeah. of it that i'm like okay that you know it has its I, place i just hate the bachelor i hate the bachelor i hate the bachelorette yeah. and i hate it's more i you yeah, wait you're oh, coming wait. out sorry oh, it's just, more yeah I would say when it it allows no space for other stuff, when it feels like it's just going all one direction and totally. not everyone wants. I think that's the frustrating part. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I did know. So the last Bachelor, what even was his name? It was supposed oh. to be like the worst rated Bachelor ever. Oh, yeah. I can't, I've never watched them. Oh, he was the, he was the plane. The, was the, pilot. the pilot. So he was dating a friend of mine and broke up with her Whoa. to no. go on it. Oh, no. yeah. See? But I'm also like, you're Literally. a pilot. Why do you need to go on TV? Like, what do you mean? You're being Told a pilot. Told her that he loved her and no. then was like, I've got this amazing, amazing career opportunity. Dude, you were the worst bachelor ever. Okay. Okay, sorry. But does this man... So I guess everyone could be doing a normal job and then they're like, I want to be famous. Because I was like, this man was I think a pilot. That's it. So I... They want to yeah. be famous. And then... Yeah. And and that makes that makes sense. It's not like he went to a pilot to become famous. He was a pilot, and he was like, "Yeah." I would and he love was dating to a really famous. beautiful, and, amazing woman, my friend. And it's like, ah. dude, you s- loser. You're now known as the worst bachelor ever. Yeah. Hope you like that fame. <laughs> <laughs> she dodged a bullet though, like yeah, totally like, dodged a bullet. And she's like dating. A, she's in love with someone now, so it's perfect. But you know, because. Yeah. If I was dating a pilot, like, you think you're just, like, dating a pilot and you're like, wow, like, that's the best case scenario. Like, this is my boyfriend. He's a pilot. That's awesome. And then it's like, no way. I know. Actually, babe, I have to admit, my real dream is to be an influencer. You know? I'd be like, like yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're I mean, a pilot. Like, what do you mean? Why do you want to, like, sell vitamins on Instagram? <laughs> Fuck. Totally. That's why I have to say, that's why a part of a big reason Ben's appeal to me is that Ben – is the most just like simple, just wants to do comedy for the love of it. He loves stand up. Like, I'm just saying, like, that's part of why I like this person because he's not, he's not gonna flip tomorrow and start like selling vitamins or like be, <laughs> be like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go on The Bachelor. And I think he would be sad if I was like, babe, I need to go on Big Brother and I might have to like be flooding with, he would be like so upset and would probably like, be sad which is See, what you want. saying that like makes me think back to the guy who was the rebound at the very beginning of us like mm. courting each other he was like oh I've been maybe been offered to maybe go on big brother and I told my mom and she was like no oh, it's over before it began <gasps> and they never ended up getting in contact with him again to go on it so then well he never went on it but the fact that he wanted to go on it should have yeah. been mm. the flag the red flag enough for me yeah. to go you are not for me absolutely yeah oh my god i'm like obsessed with your journey through love and and, and being being with people being single like all the different things I just... dating is like it's fun but also my god i was talking to a friend about it today it's like okay so it's this flipped coin of you know i'm an empowered sexual being if i have sex on the first day ultimately you i don't know how but you 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 they then have the upper hand, the, the, the energy, like the shift, the dynamic shift. They have the power. Mm-hmm. And it's that whole thing of like, so you know how we all talk, talk about, you know, wanting to female empowerment, female sexuality empowerment, but really who does that benefit? Because it doesn't benefit the woman. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's really complicated. I don't know. And I would say as well, though, I don't think having sex on the first date gives the other person the upper hand. Or if you ever feel that it does, then like, okay, that's like the red flag you needed. Because I don't totally. think yeah, like I should not see that person again. Absolutely. I would say I it hasn't for me. If the, dynamic, well. if the dynamic shifts, because like you've literally been intimate with someone, I yeah. think the dynamic should shift. But if, yeah, if it feels like a crazy power imbalance or yeah. they treat you differently, absolutely that's a red flag. But I know what you mean. Like 
I, because there women. are cases where like I've dated some guys and they're like literally dropping fruit baskets off at my door while I'm isolating. And I'm like, oh, we weren't going on another date. Thank you. That's so lovely. And then there are <laughs> other guys, one in particular, that like it's always the one you want to hear from. Yes. And his last message to me was, Chachi, I'm nearly ready for you. Want to be my friend for a night? Maybe romantic walk on the beach. And I wrote back one night only and he liked the message and that was what? it. What? What's his and first language? And my next language? response is, is going something? to be <laughs> no. What? And no punctuation. Was that really? No punctuation. So he's not like European or something? No, he is Australian. Sorry, am and... I being classist by being like, sorry, but you can't write a – like if you if you <laughs> don't speak English as your first language, that's fine. But if that if English is his only language that he speaks, then that's Chachi, actually I'm unacceptable. I'm nearly ready for you. Want to be my friend what does that mean? for a night. Like, hey, let's catch up and go for a walk and then fuck. No, Chachi, Chachi don't one time. see him again. <laughs> no, literally my response is if ever I hear from him again, which because I never responded, I'm like surely that means I'll hear from him again. I'll be like, oh, there's a brothel around the corner from where I live and I can give you the, like, details <laughs> for it if you want. No, yeah, or you should write, like, brothel round corner, go there, friend, or something. <laughs> 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 because he won't understand if you speak in a normal sentence. I don't know. I think, like, the, uh, yeah, it's it's complicated. But I think, like, what actually happens is, like, the sexual empowerment, people just kind of use that or, like, misinterpret it and then mean make that mean, like, oh, I'm okay with being treated like shit. Like, we all, like, yeah, know someone. True. Like, I know someone who, like, because I've, like, had casual relationships and stuff or, like, you know, slept with people that I wasn't in a relationship with. And I've still only done that with people who were kind to me and like treated me with respect yes and you can still expect Mm. to be treated respectfully like I've got a friend who keeps sleeping with this guy who has just treated her like shit and then she keeps Mm. kind of saying like it's not and she's like oh it's just sex and I'm like no like I know Mm. you and I know it's not and even if it was just sex like there's actually no reason to kind of do that with someone who doesn't respect you and who is kind of treating you like a doormat and has been really horrible Literally, to you in the past. That's like, awful. Can I don't do can that? Can I just say what I I feel like would it illustrate this point in Bridesmaids um, mm, when Kristen mm-hmm. Wiig is with yes. it's that where she's like, yeah, no, it's cool, it's chill, and like he treats her like shit. It's not it's, chill. <laughs> it's not chill. And, absolutely, but that's like part of the power and beauty of like if you do the work and you make these mistakes and you learn and you yeah. and you're, hopefully her priorities will change and hopefully totally. she'll see the light. Like it's all part of it. And I always think this, it's hard to be friends with someone when they're going through something that you can see clearly and they can't, but all you, like you can't make someone see the thing. It's so hard. Like yeah. they have to have their own. They have to get there. They have to get to rock bottom. They have to do whatever. It's all, and it's, that's what's crazy yeah. about. Humans. It's also hard when people don't have like ex- the, say, the expectation or like the experience of someone who like, has you know if you have been in like a or slept with someone casually or like and they have also just been nice to you and you've also just like had clear boundaries and communication about what it is and what it isn't and stuff totally. because people get into these horrific things and they're like booty called but and then like just expected to drop everything and like there's no actual communication or like you know it's like oh he always messages her and then whenever she messages him it's like no reply and then oh. if it's like, oh, that's just the expectation. Mm. Oh, it's just sex. That's how it is. It's like, no, that actually isn't how it is. And you can just like mm. be respectful with someone and like respect. I agree. Time. And even like Dolly Alderton, I don't know if you guys read um, everything <gasps> I know about love, but she oh, talks about how that. like, it's such a great book, read it if you haven't. And it's at the end, everything I know about love at 28, I think she was saying. And it's about how casual sex can be really good if both parties are equally yeah. loving and respectful and mm-hmm. trustworthy and like like I would never want to have sex with someone who isn't loving and trustworthy yeah. and respectful towards me ever and mm-hmm. there was like this guy that I was seeing let's call him Paul <laughs> right. who lives around the corner and it was very much like a I'm like oh I want to be friends with you we probably won't continue to have sex but mm. I'd like to be friend. like you know I feel like it's great when it is that thing. Yeah. But I think because I was 21 and I met my ex yes, yes. and we had sex on the first day and then dated for six years, I wow. feel very out of like what, like I'm like one of my best friends, Ryan, and I talk about this. We're both like, we, we don't, I don't want to play games and I'm not chill. No. I'm like, if I like you, yes. hey, I like you, let's hang out. I'd like to go oh, on a really. date. 
just be I want to yeah. know everything there is to know about you I'm not going to be like all coy and oh yes. you have to like you know totally. I'm going to be re- like mysterious like that's not me I don't know yes. I don't want to do that that's all you can do is just have the the courage to be yourself because it's like what totally. everyone has to learn of like if you play these games or you hold up these walls and and yeah for you to actually be be with someone it's got to be you have to have that vulnerability and that's why they always say when a door closes it's an opportunity for you like if something breaks absolutely you lose something Mm. if someone leaves you because of that like then it's again it's always a gift but it's hard to know in the moment I feel like you can get through it and also I always think about this child when you say 21 for six years you as a person like for a relationship to, to sustain for that you both have to be growing and changing and it be kind of like aligning or working like you would have changed so much as a person in that. Time. I just outgrew it in, a- in the end. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. He wasn't, he's like, you know, like it ended very badly, but the relationship mostly was wonderful and I have yeah. no regrets. Yeah. But he is still dating like a 23 year old and he's 41 Ugh, and absolutely. he, he has not, he will not never be able to be with a strong, powerful woman. Wow. And like the more powerful I get, cause I feel like I'm becoming more powerful every day as I get you older. Are. Yeah. You need to be with a man who's worthy and capable of matching that. I want to be with an equal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone who's like is secure enough. And that doesn't mean totally. you have to be secure every single second, but it means being secure is also by having conversations, by being vulnerable, by being totally. open. And because everyone feels threatened. Everyone feels like jealous, sad, scary, whatever, but it's just like going along with communication that and communicating yeah. and, and being open. So absolutely, you are a strong powerful lady and again it wasn't As a meant you to be two. No, and that's so wasn't. funny and I have the same experience of being with a 40 something year old man who like was going through the young young thing and it's like what do we what do we think what do we say what do we think it's crazy it's interesting how do you feel about I mean because you said it was a good relationship so that's a bit of an age gap like how do you feel about the age gap now like on reflection do you feel like I don't know because I always I think, think I yeah no you go you oh like, go. I was just gonna say like because you know like when you're 23 or like 21 when you started dating and then they were like 30 or something or five 36 yeah and then at the time you're like oh they're older but like um then we're not that different but then I feel like as you get older like even like me being 27 now then I think about when I was like you know 18 and then I knew someone who was dating a 27 year old you're just kind of like oh yeah but then now I'm 27 and I see 18 year olds and I'm like that's a child that's so weird literally I'm like, the same do you feel I more and more on... date someone younger yeah do you feel more uncomfortable about it like now that you're growing older or do you still feel like it was just like because obviously there's always just relationships that like age just kind of isn't as big of a deal as you think totally and it's a personal I think question. because I don't know I I never really think about it all too much the age Mm. it's more like he just who he was and the age wasn't a big thing yeah. I mean it was a little bit of a thing at the beginning because oh, it never was a thing for me I feel like I've always yeah. liked older guys and I've been making an effort to date guys more around my age like still you know yeah older so you know 29 30 31 to up to yeah. 35 yeah kind of I'm trying to still date um and not going for anyone too old, especially now, because I do look at 45 year olds and I'm like, what do you want with the 28 year old? Like, yeah. why aren't you dating someone who's 35 and ready to get married and have kids? Yeah. And why also, aren't you like, ready to get married and have kids? Yeah. And if they're not ready, then like, yeah, will they ever be ready? And then also, like, I think what- that's a big thing with him is like, if he was yeah. ever going to be ready, it would have been mm. with me. Yeah. And then um, you're not going to be ready you know right now maybe so you no just way know. I'm definitely not ready now and I think every now and again I think sometimes I was robbed of being youthful that I like very much it was like we were this married couple and I did the washing and the cooking and you know and he was very good in other ways but it was very like we fell into domestic domestic domesticity, domesticity. yeah yeah um <gasps> yeah which I will never do again now that I've done it, it's like, oh, wow. you have to like earn me to yeah. do your washing. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good thing to come out of that. I have to ask another big question that I think ties mm-hmm. in with this. But I was speaking with a friend recently who was saying that she has decided and has known for a while that she does not ever want kids. And part of the mm-hmm. reason was being like, being Doing in this it on industry, her own. being in this industry of like having to take out the time, it like, 
I guess she was saying like, it just is such a big thing, big risk to take. And it puts Huge. all the power in your partner while you have to sit out for as long. And she's like in a happy relationship, but it was just the first time I'd heard someone so adamantly be like, no, I won't have kids and looked at, at it kind of in terms of not a business way, but just like valuing their career and their independence. And mm -hmm. I just had never, cause in my head, I don't know. I just always been like, Oh, of course I, I'm going to have kids. Like that's what you do. That's something that's so exciting. But as three women in this industry, and especially also to you, Cha, like, have you thought about that of like what it's, that actually means? Because it is a big yeah. I guess it's people always talk about it. it's a disadvantage for women inherently in if you have kids you have to you lose money it's hard to get back into the world totally people I'm look just, at you differently independent yeah. like you know mm -hmm. I um I work so the the woman who plays my mother on the show Annie Jones is just like I call she's phenomenal and I adore her her and her husband they don't have kids and I look at their life and I think yeah maybe maybe they that's for me they like can go to the theater, to the cinema, to the markets, to have dinner with their friends. They like have autonomy over their lives and their careers because they're both very successful. Paul's a writer, director, producer, and Annie's an actress, and they're both very successful. And I just think, I mean, I definitely think I've had I've had this thought and this conversation a lot recently because mm. my sister's about to have her third baby, and I just think it's so exciting. But I'm wow, also like, three. you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm the youngest. What are you, the of four. Kardashians? Jesus! Literally, I'm the youngest of four, so I'm like, how the fuck do my parents do it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's like I will have one baby when I'm really fucking ready, and yeah. it, it's all about who I'm having it with. Because hey, yeah. you are gonna be at home with the baby. Like yeah. I'm not doing this on my own. Yeah, this is a fifty-fifty fucking job. So yeah, Maddie J or whatever it is, pretending not to know how to do a nappy, <laughs> like my vagina just shriveled yeah. up and died. Yeah. Grow up. It's not sexy. It's not sexy. I'm like, Ben, if you don't look at my cooch as it pushes out your fucking little shmooly son, it's <laughs> going to like, be Like, if you're not prepared <laughs> to, like, get in the dirt with me, because he's queasy. He has this crazy fear, I, don't, I can't even say in front of him, of belly buttons. And already <laughs> I'm like, I need to send this fucking idiot to therapy because if you don't watch my umbilical call, but, like, I will fucking kill you. You need to, like, rise to the challenge with some caution. And I don't know why you have this insane he, it's like a phobia it makes him want to vomit mm -hmm. saying the word hearing the word being around the word and i'm like wow. that's where the baby's gonna be that's so, so crazy. if you can't do this little thing i'm like it's not happening it's if your man yeah. happening. if your man can't <laughs> sit down with you at the dinner table a week after the birth and share a meal of your placenta together placenta, ladies literally then he is no, not a man I think I would share my placenta with you, Lauren, over Ben. Oh, like, over I'd, lunch. I'd <laughs> love to have a piece. Thank you so much. It'd be really generous of you if I, I could have a, too, then. have a bite. Yeah, yeah, do you want a bit? All right, yeah, go. the I'll girlies. The, the we'll girlies. Come to Melbourne. I'll fly to Melbourne yeah. and we have it over a beauty in your beautiful apartment. For I'll, cook you. I'll cook you. I'll cook it yeah. up, you girls. <laughs> bit of garlic. And then we'll offer like one exclusive piece as well for a Patreon listener. We'll have to do a draw. <laughs> I love it. I'll make a pate out of it. Yum. Yes, yum, wine, cheese, and Gourmet's new placenta. Italiano. It. It's probably, it'd probably already be seasoned, I reckon, your placenta. It'd be all garlic and <laughs> tomato, and it'd be a little <laughs> Napolitana you... placenta. <laughs> but how do you feel, Lauren? Like, Conchetta, you want kids, don't you? I mean, I definitely want to have one. But after being pregnant on the show, mm. I was like, you know, we, we were, there was one day we were shooting in a shed and it was like 44 degrees and oh. my chicken fillet stomach kept sliding down to my vagina Ew. and I was like, I don't want this. Because yeah, <laughs> they slide this. down. Bellies do. They do slide down. <laughs> they slide down. Yeah. Um. I mean, I've like, I, I used to do a lot of jokes as well about like wanting a baby and stuff. So I think like a lot of people know that I like want a baby. Um, I think I do. I think like what you said about like an, a couple like without kids, like they can do all this stuff in their career and stuff. And I think that's awesome, like for people who want to do that. And I like love having a career and stuff. But I think like, I don't know, I think I think I would get bored. And I think like, I, I think it would be exciting to like have like a different like chapter in your life, I guess. But that totally. said, like, it's like a big source of stress for me, because 
And people think for some reason, people think that I'm crazy for being 27, like nearly 28 and being like thinking about my fertility. But it's like, no, it's not crazy at all. Like if I left it to some, yeah, some people can just have babies at 40. And my cousin just had her first baby when she was 40. And like, she didn't even decide she wanted it until I reckon like a year ago. They were like, yeah, why not? You know? And then she just got pregnant and had a baby. so lucky. Yeah. But if I like definitely know in my heart that I want a baby and I leave it, until I'm 37 or something, until I'm, like, what's stable enough in my career, like, which will never happen because I'm a comedian, like, then I might just not be able to get pregnant and, like, that's it. So I keep passing my cat over the front of the camera because <laughs> she does around. actually have a baby. I, I do Charlie. have a baby. She has her beautiful His baby cat, Tony, Tony Soprano. Oh, Tony <laughs> Soprano. Um, you but can also, come yeah. and have some placenta pet you days. Have some. <laughs> but I think it's interesting as well, though, Um, because you were talking about, like, what Ben will be like or what your partner will be like with a baby because me and Alex have a cat now and it's so funny how much it, you can, like, just see, like, what our parenting dynamic yes, is. Yes, what they're yes. going to be like. Literally. Yeah. Literally. It's like I'm I'm in bed and Tony is up at six and he wants to be fed and I am not getting up. I'll tell you that. Alex is getting up. If we sit down to dinner and he like does a big stinky shit, I'm like, Alex, quick, go get the shit. And he runs and he gets it. Um, I so, love like, Alex. I don't know him, but I love him. He's yeah. wonderful. He's great. And like, that's as well, like what you said, it just depends about who you're with. And I think like totally. being with like the partner I'm with now, I'm like, I can see how like, it would be, yeah, no matter what, a huge disadvantage for me to be the, the mother of it in terms of my, like, life and career trajectory and stuff and the industry I'm in. But I know that yeah. he would actually be a really supportive kind of partner. So that's helpful. But you couldn't do it. Because- and also, like, fucking money. I don't have any money. I don't have a house. Like, what do you do? Oh, my God. I know. That's just, like, a, an age-old, like, fuck. Yeah. So Unless you want to move out to no man's land. We all should just move out to no man's land together. Yes, yeah, and then you can't absolutely. work, though, anyway. Well, then we can commute. We'll get a helicopter and we'll have the terrible <laughs> bachelor. The terrible yeah. bachelor can fly us in because he's going to be needing a job. Yeah, totally. But I do think I don't want you, I don't, like, with your friend Conchetta, that's great that she's made up her own mind. But I think it's we all have to remember as well that, like, you have the power to create whatever life that it is that you want. And if it is the career that you want Mm. and the relationship that you want and the children, like you can have it all. You just get a bigger plate. That's so You just say, hi, this plate is not big enough. I need a bigger one. It's a lot of work. You're you're the best. You have the best mindset of anyone I know. But I I think being with Ben is like literally where it kicked in of being like, I can see us. Like I want his and children and my I want oh, our genes together. I, I can it. see he is a beautiful, nurturing, and especially like the childhood I had with like my both mm-hmm. loving and very like violent father and have and then finding love, which took me a long while to get there with someone like Ben, who is so the opposite, so like calm and listens and understanding and doesn't have rage and, and oh, all this nice. kind of stuff. It's it's like it, you absolutely it's with the person. Ben is where I'm like, absolutely we'll have a family. But it was just the first time of being like, I'm learning now with all this time of like actually understanding when you're an adult, you actually have to think of like money. How are you I getting know. it? Where's your coming? Yeah. Children. When will you have them? A, a beautiful Patreon subscriber was like, girlies, you got to freeze your eggs. Like that's what you've got to do. Like, do-. And I hadn't even remembered that that's, a, that's important. An, it also costs money. Yeah. yeah. Well, money. that's like, that is like a, a cool thing that can give you freedom and stuff. But yeah, again, it costs a lot of money and it's also still not before, a guarantee. Like, I think mm. you need to do that if you're like 32, 33 and single and want kids. Like yeah. that's when you're like, okay, I got to freeze my eggs. Yeah. Um, We're all under 30. You're both in wonderful relationships. You don't have to worry about it. It's happening. It's you just like, money. It's just money and work and shit. Cause it's like, and when yeah. you're a freelancer or like an actor or like a comedian, it's like you don't get maternity leave. Like there's none of that. No like, way. Everyone in my family is a teacher and they're like, oh, I just like took a whole year of like full salary. Like, okay, I'm going to like <laughs> be destitute <laughs> at the gig with my baby or something strapped to my chest doing spots for $50. <laughs> I'll come. Yeah, you yeah. guys better come. Anyway, if we have I'll each other, there. we'll be fine. It's like sounds like a coven, a commune. Yeah. We just <laughs> lean on each other, work it out. That's the thing. It's like it is. It's just leaning on each other. Yeah. <gasps> you know, I'm like worried. I'm like really conscious that I feel like we're running out of time, but mm. I, I feel like we could talk to you forever. We're going to actually have you back. We've like, we just will. But I love it. Th- I also wanted to ask you, and Lauren, you can cut in, but I. We spoke about this with Megan Pesetto, uh, um last mm-hmm. guest, who is like a journalist who's 
what's her specialty? Like gossip. reality TV yeah, gossip. Yeah, gossip. Mm-hmm. Um, and she gets a lot of flack and whatever. But a big thing that we were talking about, which is something that I really keep thinking about and really pops up in a lot of things. It even came up in this TV show I was watching and the, the quote that stuck in my brain. So it's Selling Sunset. It's like all these, it's like those rich people in LA mm-hmm. who like are, um, what's the word? Real evil? estate agents okay. and evil and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And it's just privilege and whatever, but they have the same narrative, like, oh, there's the girl who came from nothing and the, the girl who like, <laughs> had every, whatever. And they talk, even in that, they're talking about how it's an office full of women and there's this new um, girl from Mexico who's come in and she's like, usually when I'm with women, they don't support each other and they're so mean, but these girls are so nice. And they were saying empowered women empower women. So a thing mm. that's always in my brain is this big, giant topic of women supporting women, of how, what does that actually look like? Because it is such a potent concept. And some people who do it then at the same time drag people, like people have such strong views. But at the same time, I'm like, I act- what does that actually mean to you? Have you had experiences where, you know, where like it's added up where you've seen that something that inspired you and that you're like, this is the way. And does this make sense? I don't totally. Really I totally, it absolutely is making sense. And it was so, I, like it was a massive turning point in my life. I started producing full time for Verizon Media under the most amazing producer, Emma Metcalf. She is like one of my bestest friends and like mentors. And her favorite quote, which I like now want to live by, is a rising tide lifts all ships. And it's yeah. that whole thing of like we are so much stronger as in a collective than we are as one. What can I do to help you? And in turn, what can you do to help me? And just honestly, my life went from like grey to yay from working with her. Wow. I couldn't. I've never been happier. Yeah, than when I worked with her. I think that arguably like, still to this day. Yeah, that That's saying so is so good as well to think about. Like, um, in like comedy specifically, but maybe um you know acting as well but like think or even just like being a woman in any kind of industry where there is like less women and like comedy is a really good example like it's really easy to like see another woman get something that you wanted and you know be mad and be like oh why didn't I get that like I wish I had that but then it's really good to stop and think and be like no like any woman like getting this big comedy opportunity is good because then that's like a woman got Ooh, this thing paving the way paving away and it's and it's good for yeah. all of us and it does it like rides all it rides what do you what raises all ships or whatever yeah. yeah yeah exactly and i also think it's okay like it's normal human like emotional response to be jealous it's just making sure yeah. that you're not spite yeah like it's like i'm Checking allowed it. to be I, I wanted that. I'm allowed to feel this way. Yes. I can still be happy that this person has this success or has this thing that I wanted Yeah. because it proves. The other thing I always like tried to remind myself when my friends were booking roles around me, mm. felt like I was never going to do it. And it was like, no, it's proof that it happens. It's proof <gasps> that so it happens. Beautiful. That's so good because like, oh, what did I want to say? Again, this thing that keeps happening that I keep feeling is like, people and again this could be my paranoid brain where I'm literally convinced like everyone hates me all the time that's like my anxiety and all <laughs> everyone loves stuff you gotta but, work yes. through. but of like when people congratulate you and they don't mean it I'm like I would yeah. rather you didn't or like like there's just this thing of like when you're genuinely happy for someone it's actually so much sweeter than like like there's just so much in this industry of like and I just remember you Chai, mm. when you got your like and I'd known you when you were doing all your other stuff and you were acting, we were both little babies in improv. And then you got this huge role. Truly like felt like, of course, and a genuine like happiness and pride. And it's just like, that is an interesting, beautiful thing to foster. And also Lauren is the person who was a bit ahead of me in comedy. And she taught me about, you taught me that Lauren, you were like, it's about helping other people. And you, and so I, it's like, I'm always just trying to learn and understand because it is like a big scary thing where your brain can make it so small Mm. and And I think also like society and everything it it, like it teaches us that it's like there isn't enough good to go around there isn't enough opportunity there isn't enough success there isn't enough and it's like there is there is Mm -hmm. more than enough Mm -hmm. to go around yeah and someone said remembering that success isn't a sugar bowl it's not like gonna run out and you never yeah it's just always going and also, if you actually, like, live it, like, actually live, like, the philosophy of, like, 
being trying to be genuinely happy for other people and trying to genuinely support other people, then other people will genuinely support you, you know, like even totally. like me and Conchetta as an example, like Conchetta, if we had both just been like, no, fuck you, like we've got to like everything for ourselves, <laughs> then like, yeah, we would be in opposition to each other and I would get something and then you wouldn't get it and then I wouldn't tell you about, you know, like, but now instead we've we've like a partnership and we've got a podcast. And so now if you become super famous, it's good for me too because like I'm attached Absolutely. to the podcast and it would like, you know, and then also like then it's like an opportunity. Like if you've got friends that are getting all these cool roles and stuff, then they know the casting managers and they can introduce you to them. If they're mm-hmm. genuinely altruistic, then it's all positive. I agree like, with that. Totally. Yeah. Because that's the other thing that I always say to like, you know, to my friends is like I – always want to mention your friends names in rooms they are not yet in yeah so it's like it's that whole thing of like you may not be in that room yet and maybe I am but I'm going to make sure your name is mentioned because you're going to be in that room too so it's always it's like it's that whole thing of like a rising tide lifts all ships I've got your back you've got my back you know I may have this like menial success right now doesn't mean it's gonna like you you just never know how life is gonna Mm. go and you Mm. are like what is it you're the sum of the people (gasps) who are around you so like always making sure that you surround yourself with people who love and adore and respect you and prop you up and you do the same for them totally and I always think this this always sticks in my brain of like people remember how you made them feel and it is also important to clock, and this is like a therapy thing, of to clock when you leave someone, how do you feel? Like if you are leaving a friendship or a room or a thing and you're feeling um, more stressed, more anxious, bad about yourself, these are important. Whereas if you leave a friend mm. or a partner or whatever, obviously it depends whether it's like the context and argument or whatever, and you're feeling like you genuinely feel happier and more positive, it's important to – because you can't – we're humans. We just remember the feelings and they're totally. powerful and your gut and all these wow. different things. This is beautiful. Oh my god! I think this, um, oh, this is yeah. so beautiful. beautiful. This, this is super soul. Soul. In a circumcision. This has made me so happy. This is the most super soul episode we've had. We probably <laughs> should we wrap it up, Lozzy? We should wrap it up. Um, and I was trying to think of a quick fuck watch to do to wrap it up. Um, which <laughs> I fuck know, watch? You try, you're like, what is going What's on? Gonna happen? Do you want to explain? A fuck watch is a fun game we play. It's kind of like you know, like fuck, marry, kill, or something. But instead, oh, I love it. we are. We offer like two people or things or concepts or whatever. And it's like, which one do you fuck? And which one is like in the room with you while you're fucking them, like watching, maybe they're commentating, whatever they're doing is dependent on like their character. So like one that you're fucking one is like watching it all happen. And I was looking at like oh. neighbors' characters, but I, I don't even yeah. know the neighbors' oh, characters that no. well. So it might be Please kind of don't ask me to fuck watch any of my colleagues. <laughs> no. If you're- I guess maybe being I, your colleagues. No, no, we should do the Bachelor, Bachelor edition, the worst oh, Bachelor of all time. Oh yeah, the, and um, the and either Tim. Maddie J or no, or, Tim Rose, your cop. We'll do Maddie J, Maddie J, um, and the worst fuck watch. So who yeah. are you fucking? Maddie J, I'm um, fucking Who's Maddie J, and the worst the pilots watching. And yeah. what's he doing? Is he like he's flying the, the plane? The pilot, <laughs> he's fla- he's flying the plane. It's mile high. He knows how to do. We're in the cockpit. <laughs> We're in the cockpit. <laughs> and I you're like it. eyes on the Seat sky, belts brother. On. Seat belts on. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. I think we should leave it on that. That's um, perfect. child, where can people find you? See you? Obviously, everyone. If you're not crazy, we'll look at neighbors. It's easy to know where neighbors. It is. That's on 10 Peach weeknights at 6.30. <laughs> and otherwise, you can find me um, in isolation in Collingwood. I accept flowers, <laughs> oh yeah. my God, fruit yes. baskets, and, and wine. And foot scrubs from your And yeah. foot scrubs. Foot yeah. scrubs. <laughs> Please don't, like, come in them before you send them. But if you do, just, like, <laughs> give her a heads up at least. Just give me a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> just tell her. And, like, it's chill if you do, but just let us know. Like, I yeah. just want to know. You don't worry, because no, I'd put it in the fridge if don't anyone worry. had come in it. You know, like, same. I want to preserve that. I'm not yeah. ready for a kid yet. We just had this discussion. Were <laughs> you listening? Crazy. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. thank you so much, Charlotte. It's been a pleasure. No, thank you both. You're both divine. Thank Love you, you so much. Love you so much. Bye.